Hi guys and welcome to another Windows tutorial. I know it's been a while but yet again I'm back and today we're going to look at how to install VMware vCenter 5 standard onto Windows Server 2008 R2. To get started put the VMware DVD into your drive and if it auto starts then great if it doesn't go to computer and double click on the disk. So you'll see you have various options. You can install the vCenter server, the vSphere client, the vSphere web client, and the vSphere update manager, along with various support tools and utilities. You'll see also on the right here that there are some prerequisites, which is .NET Framework 3.5 service pack 1 and windows installer 4.5 if you don't install these now then it's okay the installation or well, the installer will install these for you once you've got vm vcenter server in, um, <laughs> highlighted click install select your language and click ok Right now, the installer will install Visual C for us. Okay, now the installation is ready for us. Click Next. Click Next. Agree to the end user license agreement and click Next. Enter your username, organization, and license key if you have one. If you don't enter a license key, um, as it says below, it will just install it in evaluation mode. So go ahead and click next. So on this page, you need to choose what kind of database you want to use. If you're just going to use it for playing about, learning about it, it's fine. You can just use the SQL Server 2008 Express instance it wants to create. However, if you want to manage loads of vCenter servers or loads of ESXi hosts with this, then you probably shouldn't be watching this video, but you can also use a existing supported database on another server maybe, or using a full Microsoft SQL Server rather than just Express. For this example I'm going to let it install its own instance of SQL Server and I'm going to click Next. Generally the defaults here are fine so you can go ahead and click Next. For some reason I always see this I can always resolve it myself if I try and go to the server's address from another computer. Click OK. You can leave these as default, there's no need to change them. Click Next. Right, here you can either create a standalone VMware vCenter server instance or join an existing VMware vCenter server group. Because this is my one and only VMware vCenter I'm going to use the top option to create a standalone server. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. These are all the different ports that other servers use to connect to this vCenter server. They're all fine being default unless you want to change them for security. But obviously they're all standard like HTTPS port 443, HTTP 80, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. The inventory service has different ports, however that's obviously for security and because the other ports have already been used for something else. Go ahead and click next. Now you need to choose the inventory size. This is for the database and the memory configuration of this database. Because we're only, I'm only going to be adding one ESXi host to this server, I'm fine with you know the default of small and 
a gig of memory. And to be honest, if you're doing anything like this, then you don't really need to be watching this video because you probably know what you're doing. But okay, we're going to go ahead and click next. Ignore this option down here because we're not going to be powering on more than 2,000 virtual machines. <laughs> probably, only, probably not even going to power on any with this server, really. So we're going to go ahead and click install. At this point, it will start installing SQL Server 2008 R2 Express for us. And you can probably safely walk away now for the next few minutes because it won't need you. Now the installation is complete, you can go ahead and click finish and then close. Actually, I've got to check something because I'm not sure. VMware. Okay, the next thing we need to do then, I thought it would have done it for me, is install the vSphere client. And obviously you'll see here Brexit again our .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 and I'm not quite remember what that is but it's <laughs> some Microsoft one time so basically what the vCenter client is is it will let us access the vCenter server or any you know VMware ESXi host that we have and manage it and all its settings from another computer go ahead and click install you don't have to do this on the server by the way, you can go ahead and do it on another computer but for the simplicity of not creating a virtual machine to show you this I'll just do it on this one so language ok ok now the installation wizard is ready go ahead and click next and click next and agree to the end user license agreement and click next put in your name and organization and then click next choose where you want to install the vSphere client the defaults fine click next and then click install go ahead and click finish and that's it VMware vSphere client is installed and you'll see the icon here that's it for tutorial in the... there we go <laughs> in the next you will look at installing VMware ESXi version 5. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and look out for many more coming soon.